So welcome to our Danes Moss Nature Reserve here up near Macclesfield in Cheshire. Now it's the largest raised bog in the county um, which makes it a really important site for the uh, myriad of species that live here but also for locking up carbon. So the sphagnum moss is here really important in the way that they break down for capturing carbon and not releasing it out into the atmosphere helping us to tackle climate change. So if you come with me we're going to a little bit of walk around and we'll see what we can see here. Come on. So as we walk along, you can probably hear that I'm actually walking on this nice wooden boardwalk. Um, just seen the species I want to show you. So it's a fantastic spot for common lizards. And they'll come out and they'll bask on this boardwalk, really exposed, really nice and sunny. Um, and I've walked across here and I've counted over 100 common lizards before. You have to go quietly, you have to go steadily. You have to keep your eye out because the second they hear you, the second they feel the vibrations, they'll scurry off under the boardwalk and they'll disappear into the undergrowth. So I'll see if I can try and find you a common lizard. So there we have the common lizard. You can see it's, it's laying its belly really flat, uh, maximising that surface area, really catching the sun's rays and warming up. Um, obviously it's a, it's a reptile so it does need um, some warmth from the sun to, to warm its body up. It's cold-blooded. Um, but a brilliant thing to come and see here at Danes Moss in August is by far the best month. A lot of the young are out um, and that's when you'll see loads and loads of these lizards um, across this boardwalk. If you're walking across this boardwalk and you're keeping an eye out for the lizards um, which are literally every I don't know two or three yards at the moment this time of year and you can keep an ear out for some of the birds that are singing. So I'll go quiet for a little while and we'll see what we can pick out. So we just had the start and you might sing again. There it is. We just heard a willow warbler. Um, so a migrant species comes all the way from the north of Africa, southern Europe. And it'll spend its summer here um, where it'll raise its young. And now as said we're into August, it'll be fattening up. It'll be getting ready for that migration back across the, uh, the seas and over to mainland Europe. Lovely nice descent um, to the song, so it always describes as a silvery cascade and you'll find it here, hopefully you can see that in the background, in these bits of scrub. And that's what they like, they like kind of slightly more open but with little bits of scattered scrub, that's where you'll find willow warbler, chiff chaff, very similar species, but you'll find that in the mature woodland just at the end of the boardwalk here. So it tends to prefer more mature, taller trees where it'll sing from the very top. And actually, the songs are a good way to tell them apart. Chiff Chaff sings its name, Chiff Chaff Chiff Chaff, Willow Warbler, that nice descent, but also the habitats are fairly different. And it's a really good way to try and separate them out. So the other thing the woodland here at Danes Moss is brilliant for is fungi. Now I'd expect to find this kind of mushroom here. The soils here are quite acidic, which you kind of can tell by the, the mixture of the woodland here is more silver birch and more oak. Um, and this is a fungi that loves those more acidic soils. So this is a fly agaric. Really easy to recognise, that bright red top and there's little white dots on it. Um, lovely to see, but certainly one I'm not going to be touching or picking. So that noise you can hear there, that high pitch repetitive, oh it's just stopped now, that high pitch repetitive chirping. That's a nut ash. So um, cavity nesting species, similar to blue tit, great tit, nesting a little hole in a tree. Um, but actually it's it's such a nice bird to see. Bright orange underside, um, steely blue back and a little bandit mask, a little black stripe across the eyes. Um, and it's the only species in the UK whose claws are strong enough to hold on a tree and walk vertically down and up a tree. Um, fantastic to know that they're here and probably have bred here again this year. So we've come off the boardwalk now, out of the woods, and back on the public footpath that runs through the reserve. Now just to my right, just behind you guys, and some nice open pools on a bit of land next door. Now these tend to be really good in the winter for overwintering waterfowl. So things like teal, you'll often get tufted ducks on there as well. Um, sometimes things like pintail or widgeon. So it's worth trying to, to look through the woodland and see what's out there on those pools. So I've come off the boardwalk now to try and show you some of the sphagnum mosses. So here's a patch of it here. And when you look at it, it might just look green and a little bit like a lawn. But actually, if you touch it, even though it's not rained for a couple of days now, it feels quite damp. So, I'll show you how good it is 
at holding water and basically acting like a giant sponge. So you can see the amount of water it holds for its size. Now it's great for um, things like flood prevention and actually if we re-wetted most of our sphagnum mosses um, not only here in Cheshire but in other parts of the uplands um, in the Peak District and the lakes would do a great job of preventing floods further downstream. So as I've said the the bogs here are brilliant habitat for dragonflies now along with that um, come their predators. So here at Danes Moss we do get hobbies coming through. Um, fantastic bird of prey, bright red pair of trousers on the male, um, slightly bigger than a kestrel but look like a giant swift, these sickle shaped wings darting through the skies and they'll be hunting the dragonflies that we get here at Danes as well as things like house martins and swallows as well which will occasionally get passing through in big flocks so it's worth trying to keep your eyes out to the sky as well or listen out for their quite distinctive call as they're flying around the nature reserve here. Now what you can probably just about see behind me are these sleepers on the floor Now this is a remnant of an old minecart track that they used to use to extract the peat um, from Danes Moss and just if you carry on down that way it leads out to a train track and then to a canal and so they used to load up in the carts, push it down there and take it away. Um, now luckily, now that we own Danes Moss, those sorts of practices have stopped because extracting peat dries out the bog, um, destroys habitat and is awful for storing carbon and therefore really bad for climate change. Um, in between that and us owning it it was a forestry plantation as well, so all the bog was planted up with trees. Um, again, drying out the bog and stopping it from capturing carbon and instead releasing the carbon that it had already captured. Um, so one of our main jobs here is keeping the trees off the bog um, because raised bogs can store up to three times the amount of carbon compared to a woodland of the same size. Um, so really important, we keep it wet, we keep it producing sphagnum, we keep it producing peat. Unfortunately, that's the end of our virtual tour here at Danes Moss. Now there's loads of stuff for you to come and see. I've walked around for just one day and there's a whole year's worth of wonderful wildlife for you to come and discover. So whether you're a local resident or just visiting the area, pop around to Danes Moss and see what wildlife you can discover. Until then, hopefully you'll stay safe and you'll stay wild too. See you soon guys.